What's up guys, Dale with Airbrush Customs here and today we are going to paint some black shirts. Okay, so almost all of the airbrush paints that I use are transparent, except for black and white and some special colors that I'll mix for special occasions. Most of the paints being transparent means that anytime I paint on a black shirt, it needs to have a white base underneath. I'm gonna show you how to get a nice even white base so that your colors that you layer on top of that still look even. And I'm gonna show you how to get a nice bright design on a black t-shirt, hopefully without spending too much time putting down that white base without using too much paint to make that white base that makes your shirt crunchy. We're just gonna get a nice smooth design on this black shirt as quickly as we can. I'm gonna start by laying out my, my letters as I do as a usual graffiti design and then we're going to fill those letters in with a solid and consistent white underbase. Now that I've gotten all of the shapes that I'm going to be filling in with color lined out, I'm going to start filling it with my white. A couple things I want you to notice about how I'm filling this white in is look how far away from the shirt I am. I'm very lightly spraying a very thin layer of white paint down from farther away from the shirt. I'm not up close to the shirt as I usually am with line work. I'm far away I'm dusting in a nice light white coat of paint. What you want to do here is layer as much paint on top of this shirt as you can as opposed to shoving this paint inside of the shirt. The shirt's always gonna absorb some paint but you want to get as much of this paint on top of the shirt as you can. This shape actually stays black, so I'm not going to fill that in. Now that I've got one coat of paint down, I can put my second coat on and I can put this coat on a little bit heavier because it already has this white base that's gonna prevent most of that paint from absorbing. I can layer this white paint on heavier now that I have that white dry base down. Make sure this is dry before you do that or it's just gonna soak through anyway. I can still see my lines in the background so I can still fill this back in or outline this rather. I'm still making sure to get a very even coat of paint. The consistency of this coat of paint will determine the consistency of the look of the fill that you put on top of it. If you have a very splotchy white fill here, whatever color you put on top is also gonna be splotchy. This is just as important as the final coat. Notice I'm not too worried about overspray. One of the ways to speed this design up is that at the end, I'm going to use black to outline everything, and that was going to hide all of the overspray that, overspray that I've created. As you're going, this paint is already dry. You should be lowering or layering light enough coats of paint that this paint is almost immediately dry. I'm gonna fill these letters in with yellow and then come back with the pink gradient on top. This, just like the white, is gonna take several coats of paint. No. 
us on building up coats of paint on top of each other, a little bit at a time. This is why people avoid painting on black shirts. This is a lot of extra work. It takes much longer than painting on a white t-shirt. Now we're starting to see the color that we want. We're starting to see the brightness that I'm looking for. Um, and when I bring in these black outlines on top of everything, it's really gonna make this design pop. And it's gonna look good, nice and bright on this black shirt. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my black outlines and fills and it's gonna really make everything pop out. Notice even this opaque black takes a couple coats to get a nice solid deep cover. Now I'm going to add some white highlights to my letters. Here it is. What did we learn? We learned that we need to do many light coats of white as a base and many light coats of every other color on top of that. 
these shirts just take a long time. Black shirts are difficult. We notice we didn't use a hair dryer, um, and that is to show you that we can do that without a hair dryer. But with a hair dryer, you'd be able to do a little bit heavier coats of paint and be drying them as you're painting. Airbrush in one hand, hair dryer in the other, and you can layer things faster. But the concept remains the same. Light coats of paint on top of each other. You'll need several coats, even with opaque colors like white and black and your other opaques. It just takes layers. That's it, as simple as it is. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit that bell icon, and enjoy future videos and stuff. Thanks, guys.